Thank you, Ms. Horner. Uh, Mr. Rourke. Senator Franken, thank you, Member Cornyn, members of the subcommittee. Thank you all very much for the opportunity to testify here today. I'm Eric Ruark, Director of Research for the Federation. Yes, for Federation for American Immigration Reform, known as FAIR. FAIR is a national nonprofit public interest organization representing more than 200,000 members and activists nationwide. We've been working for more than 30 years to promote policies that will end illegal immigration, restore moderate legal immigration, and to reform our immigration laws to bring them into accord with the national interest. I'm here today to testify about the employment of illegal workers in the agriculture industry. The H-2A visa program was created under the Immigration Reform and Control Act of 1986, specifically to allow the agriculture industry to transition to a legal workforce. Since then, large commercial farming operations actually have increased their reliance on illegal labor. The H-2A program has not been successful because the federal government has failed to secure the border and to enforce immigration law in the interior. Large commercial farming operations have taken advantage of this laxity choosing to employ low-wage illegal workers in large numbers, over a million by last count if workers on livestock farms are included. Representatives lobbying on behalf of commercial farming interests oppose efforts that will result in a conversion to a legal agricultural workforce. They claim that converting to a legal workforce is cost prohibitive, both for farmers and for consumers, and some have said explicitly that without illegal workers, crops would rot in the fields. No one would dispute that farm work is tough and that picking crops is not a job that many Americans would choose to do. But that does not mean there are not Americans who are willing to work as farm laborers and that fair wages and adequate working conditions would not attract more American farm workers. In the first quarter of 2011, there were over 28 million working age American citizens with a high school diploma or less who were not in the workforce. It is simply not credible to argue that none of these Americans would be willing to do farm work when today up to 30 percent of hired farm laborers are American citizens. What I have found from examining data from the Department of Labor and the Department of Agriculture is that large commercial farms are the major employers of illegal workers and can afford to pay wages up to 30 percent higher than they currently pay and still remain profitable even if the increases are not passed on to the consumers in higher retail food prices. Large commercial farming operations are a vital component of the nation's food supply chain. When considering immigration and labor policy, the federal government must consider the interests of the agriculture industry, but that does not mean that the interests of the agriculture industry should trump the interests of the American public. Nor should they be allowed to continue to enjoy profits while depending on a low-wage, mostly illegal workforce. And I want to underline this point. There are those who are profiting from hiring illegal farm workers, while the economic and social costs of illegal immigration are passed on to the American people. Yes, if illegal workers were replaced with legal workers, profit margins would be reduced, and it's likely that food prices would increase. But these increases in consumer prices would be very small, which has been demonstrated by other researchers. And I believe that Americans would be willing to add a few dollars to their weekly grocery bill if they knew that this, would, if they knew that this was the result of farm workers being paid a living wage. To argue that our food supply is dependent upon the use of illegal workers should raise some very fundamental questions, particularly uh, the ways in which the men and women who pick our crops are treated by their employers. There is an essentially moral question that underlies this discussion that we cannot dismiss simply by talking about price points or global competitiveness. If we as Americans want to have an honest food system that has integrity and one in which farm workers earn an honest wage for their labor and are not subjected to adverse working conditions, we must recognize the effect that a constant flow of illegal aliens is having on farm workers in this country. To maintain, as some industry representatives have, that the press wages for hired farm workers are not the result of the use of illegal workers, and that the failure of these jobs to provide a living wage is not the number one reason why Americans are discouraged from taking these jobs, flies in the face of all logic and in the face of all evidence. It is also misleading to declare that the H-2A program is a failure when it has been vastly underutilized by employers who have chosen to hire illegal workers. It may not be that Americans would take all available, available jobs vacated by illegal workers, but working to achieve a legal agricultural workforce will result in better wages paid to farm laborers and better working conditions on farms, and this will attract more Americans to these jobs. Thank you very much.